And out of nowhere, Bose drops a new flagship. The Roll Off Your Tongue Confidence Infused Bose Smart Ultra Soundbar released September 2023, retailing at $900. Now, you might be cynically mumbling to yourself that this bar is merely the 900 with an AI dialogue enhancement mode. Wrong. Nine. The Bluetooth version has been updated from 4.2 to 5.0, and the remote lost more of its buttons. Anyway, in this video, I will be reviewing the $2,347 Complete Seismic Sound Ultra Ultimate Supreme Mega Max Pro Extreme Plus HD XL Home Theater System. But first, we must face head on the awkwardness that saturates our predicament. So when I was made aware of this new Bose Ultra Bar, my lascivious side went, oh yeah, Bose gone and built itself a muscle car bar, giving Sonos the business. Snap. Then you mosey on to the website and you think, hmm, okay, well, that looks a lot like the 900, but they made it super big, right? Because ultra. A few iterations later, you realize you got the Bose 900 with an added dialogue feature. I know I shouldn't get too excited about the ultra as it's just a new brand name, but I mean, the QC Ultra headphones brought a new design and a host of new features, so... I anticipate that this bar will display the flagship banner through late 2025. During this time frame, expect substantial market enhancements that will further set this product apart in the wrong direction. More consternation. The surrounds and sub-branding are woefully behind, still supporting the 700 moniker. We got some components here of a certain age. So if you're aiming for the seismic nuclear Bose experience, you should probably be thinking, is Bose going to drop some sort of updated components the second after I press the complete order button? My favorite self-made conspiracy is that the Smart Ultra purpose is really just an internal update that will bring compatibility to these enhanced components. Before digging into the review, I got to start by disclosing a very serious concern so you don't miss it. When starting up the TV, it is fairly common for the system to make no sound. This is not anomalous to the Smart Ultra. I have a video with over 100,000 views on how to get the Bose 700 to make sound. That video should not have that many views. That's bad. Anyway, this round with the Smart Ultra was not so involved and was always fixed with unplugging and replugging HDMI and power. I can't blame it on the TV, which is a 2022 Samsung frame, because this only happens with Bose, and I've tested a fairly broad sample. Bose not making sound on TV startup is complete mission failure. Pull yourself together. Design and build. When freeing the 700-900 Smart Ultra from its packaging, I always think, gosh darn, if this is not the sexiest bar money can buy. With its slick, nicely finished glass top, metal grill with supple curves, and an atypical attention to detail. In a design masterstroke carried over from the 700 and 900, the display is tucked between the glass and grill. It's a super thin one-dimensional LED display that can communicate quite a bit with illumination patterns, colors, and various animations. How obvious any of these states are is another question, but it is futuristic looking, it's in the front, and it goes away. The Smart Ultra, like the 900, is a well-endowed 3.0.2 speaker with nine drivers. Grounding the bar, we have a center tweeter surrounded by two racetrack drivers on both sides. I've always been a little perplexed on how the four surrounding woofers contribute to either the center or left-right channel. The driver spacing is very atypical. Beyond these five centrally placed drivers, you have a phase-guided tweeter on the left and right, designed for greater sound dispersion. The two height channels are single woofers. All the drivers are powered by their own Class D amplifier. The surrounds, they're extremely well built. They were meticulously sized and styled to mimic a fancy soda can at Whole Foods. The speaker enclosure does not have wireless capacity. It's a passive speaker that is fed via a separate wireless unit. They are both 1.0 channel speakers with two drivers facing each other, one pointed up and one down. It's a very odd arrangement, though it does output 360 sound. As such, it doesn't really matter sound-wise how you orient the speaker. The Submodule 700. I get a pretty strong Kickstarter mini-fridge vibe. You know, it's a slick mini-fridge, but a mini-fridge nonetheless. 
It is very well built, made of high society plastic with a raised glass slate on top. Anti-gravitic glass does seem to be a common theme. Bose brags about low distortion using their proprietary quiet port technology. My past experiences are consistent with the hype. In case there's any confusion, this is a 5.1.2 channel system. Features, let's start with ports. We have eARC, but no HDMI input, so we don't need to talk about pass-throughs. Though an inconvenient omission if you need a direct connection to the bar for lossless audio purposes, most likely because your TV does not support eARC. Every one of these four holes are kind of weird, but I wanna call out two of them specifically. First, base out. Yes, you can connect via wire, the submodule 700, and unofficially a third party subwoofer that is powered via other means. So that would be a powered sub or sub with an external amplifier. I think the official Bose stance is don't do this. Nonetheless, I have had success with the Klipsch R100 SW powered sub. When it's connected, it very obviously subs and is even recognized by the app. I was most excited about the SVS 3000 micro sub as I thought I could craft a really tight sound. I don't know why, but every time I connect it to the bar, it is recognized for 15 seconds or so, and then Bose cuts the audio signal and drops the sub from the app. So yes, third-party subs can be used, but proceed with caution. Clip seems to be your safest bet, as I have directly confirmed it works. Second, Adapt IQ or Adapt Eek. Uh, both make me feel less IQ'd after saying it. Anyway, this is where you plug in the provided head-mounted microphone that is used when room tuning. Audio codex. You're good on the Dolby side, including Atmos along with PCM up to 7.1, but DTS support remains completely non-existent. I'm not sure what percent of soundbar buyers are super pumped about DTS Blu-ray discs, but the ones that are, get loud. And I imagine they will sound off in the comments section and pound the like and subscribe button to really show Bose what's what. Wireless playback, a fairly strong showing in that both Apple and Android devices are well served. So Bluetooth 5.0 upgraded from 4.2, AirPlay 2 so you can multi-room this system with other AirPlay speakers with CD quality audio from your iOS devices. And Chromecast. Often left off soundbars, but it's a nice feature for sure, as it gives the Android folks an improved option over Bluetooth. But beyond that, it supports higher audio quality than AirPlay, and it streams from servers, not the phone, so it doesn't monopolize your phone's audio while DJing your soundbar music party. You can multi-room with Chromecast as well. In addition, you have Spotify Connect, which is a stream from servers option for Spotify, along with Amazon Music and TuneIn, which were built into the Bose Music app. So you get a Sonos Lite experience with those two services. Amazon's Blue Girl is built in. I've long been impressed with Bose's microphone sensitivity and responsiveness. That still holds here. Bose does go a little further here with their voice for video feature that enables you to channel surf more easily with voice, assuming you're using a cable or satellite box, which, it's a thing you can do. If you want to control everything via Google Assistant, you can, but you will need a third-party device. You can transfer or expand your smart ultrasound to select Bose products using SimpleSync. So think handoffs to headphones and Bluetooth speakers that can mimic and extend the reach of your TV sound. Sound technologies and adjustments. So along with the 700 and 900, Bose is still using its true space technology, which aims to Atmos, Atmos-less content by upmixing, bringing in height channels, and partaking in DSP funny business. Another carryover is Adaptique, which is the room tuning feature that requires a bit of self-sacrifice by putting on a headband. But this headband does have a microphone, making it more useful than most headbands you might otherwise be wearing by helping you to calibrate the system to the room to your precise head position in the commander's seat. Third, and this is basically the crux of the whole video, but we won't say that out loud, an AI dialogue mode advertised to deliver ultra crisp vocal clarity. Did you catch that? Other than updated packaging and grittier marketing, that is the feature the 900 has not. 
For soundbar specific adjustments, you have two channel level controls, that would be center and height, and basic bass treble EQ. The surrounds and sub level can be controlled independently, and both can be toggled on and off very easily. In terms of controlling everything, you have the extremely minimalist bar controls that include an Alexa button and a don't use Alexa button. The remote, my goodness, has this thing gotten a dressing down since the 700. Breathtaking. From being able to control satellites, I presume, to whatever the opposite of a big boy remote is. It looks like a snack, you know, like a, like a naughty little chocolate bar. The app, Bose Music, well, the kids are all right. It's simple and clean. It's where you manage setup, make all your audio adjustments, and get audio codec confirmations. Sound quality, well, it's decidedly competent, a smooth operator, modern sheen embodied in a soundbar, but not exceptional. Unfortunately, this system just lacks the gravity, that irresistible force that the price category demands. I struggle to point to a sound feature that grabs you and says, we will make this home theater experience special. If your sound bar is not grabbing you, you're doing it wrong. For comparison, I do sense there is something singular about the Q990B slash C, for instance, with masterful melding of force and grace, the Arc with 300s and the utterly surprising rear Atmos experience, and the A9 with its futuristic take on the soundbar that demonstrates a breathtaking ability to create refreshingly clean and precise sound objects. Without exception, friends and family hear these systems and say, oh wow, many oh wow faces I have seen. This system, while certainly strong, doesn't amaze with that capital A. It doesn't take you to that holy moly moment. I think this is fair to mention as maybe I'm coming across as a meanie. I also struggle to call out anything particularly distasteful or unpleasant about the sound, which may be one of this system's strongest points. It's not offensive. It's cool, smooth, refined. Maybe the safest bet. The bar sound by itself is clean and modern, a little lean in the middle, prioritizing the lows and highs. It's not aggressive or unpleasant, but it does have to juggle between kind of intricate mids and foundation. The compromise is somewhere in the middle, but leans closer to foundation. With just the bar, the Atmos effect is noticeable, but not awe-inspiring. The soundstage is generous, particularly given the bar size, with assistance from the Phase Guide tweeters and True Space technology. When room tuning, the bar's virtualization can convincingly place invisible speakers in the front corners of the room, far beyond the boundaries of the bar. This certainly carries over to action movies and high-end shows. But with just the bar, you have precisely a decent Atmos in the front, not in the back kind of situation. This bar doesn't get anywhere near breaking that sound barrier. You know, where Sennheiser gets much closer. The AI dialogue mode is a solid ad. I spent 90 plus percent of the time with it toggled on because I preferred it that way. When you turn it on, you may notice a mild contouring and raising of speech that I want to say is something more than just making it louder without drowning out the nuances and the rest of the scene in any way that is obvious. For instance, it was noticeably helpful in this free space willy show I stumbled on where this vaguely familiar emo teen is chatting with this short girl in a funny hat during some sort of an outdoor laser show. The dialogue boost gently lifted their voices without sacrificing the ambiance of the rave. If you need extra dialogue assistance, there is no sledgehammer option, but you can adjust the center channel up a few clicks, which may hit the sweet spot. Adding a sub is a must if you're thinking of getting serious with this system. The sub module 700, it not only extends the low end, but frees the bar to be more expressive and articulated in the mids. The 700 performance is tight and contoured and is very light on the distortion, true to Bose's claims. I do grudgingly endorse previously made comments by my arch rival that 
the 700, 900 Smart Ultra base handoff is top tier and highly sophisticated. Among the best in the business. That being said, the base module 700 is not a monster. It's proportional to the bar, maybe, is a nice way to say it. If you're seeking a more aggressive or menacing sound, well, you have options, unofficially. Subbing in the Klipsch R100 SW, the frequency range was extended far lower than the submodule 700. The performance exceeded my expectations. The ensemble sounded dang good and was far more physical. I'm not convinced that the result was as sophisticated or coordinated as with the base module 700, but starting all over, I would not feel compelled at all to buy the $850 submodule 700 if I had the R100SW as a ready option, though I suspect I would feel the same with many other subs. The Bose Surrounds 700. It's easy to bash them based on price and size and channel count and the ball and chain, but it's also easy to bash them on their extremely limited vocal range. As far as I can tell, they do trouble with an occasional drop into the higher mids. Their role largely seems to be around texturizing, so sharpen atmospherics and emphasizing foreground sound effects. They really do nothing in terms of expanding sound richness and fullness to the sides and rears and certainly nothing close to the low-end intensity you might get from, say, an ERA 300 surround. I'm not done. I don't even sense that the sound they do offer in their limited range is exceptionally clear and crisp. When really zoning in on them, I hear the occasional distortion and dropout. And when this is not happening, I sense something fairly pedestrian, prone to muddling. Yes, if you want the most exciting and immersive Smart Ultra experience, you will need to buy these, but these have got to be top three, if not the most vain soundbar accessory a customer can buy. Some movie scenes that I thought sounded particularly flattering on this bar, the super duper magnet sequence in Underground 6, it hit a little different with this system. The whipping, breaking, stabbing, creaking, and magnet resonance was well played with the four components. The Pope's Exorcist spooked pretty effectively with an ample dose of ambiance and the demonic detached voice creeping tall and wide. The surrounds, if there is a strength, it's reinforcing the tingly eerie cutting sounds. This movie provides ample opportunity to play to those strengths. Music, gonna focus on listening via HDMI. Uh, much a similar story, pretty much universally pleasant and sophisticated. I could certainly point to systems that could offer a more polyphonic, enchanting, well-rounded, melodious experience, but a few songs did capture my attention more than others with this system. Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, the natural smoothness of the song was well-maintained with the Bose profile. The bass module expertly supported the unforgettable bass line and the percussive elements were cleverly shared with the rear speakers. You know, the shaker sounds. Another, Jim Croce, Time in a Bottle. The guitar part came across as very isolated, intelligible, and musical, and his haunting vocals, RIP, were given an ample dose of breath that gracefully expanded throughout the room. Okay, time to wrap this up. Anyway, a new sound bar with Ultra in the title communicates an exciting new beginning. In reality, this system comes across very much like an ending. It's a quality product that needs to make major changes to keep up with its increasingly ambitious peers. It is certainly discouraging that the centerpiece of this much desired revolution is barely an evolutionary step. Um, however, in the short term, I do sense that this system could be elevated significantly by a multi-channel beefier surround option a Bose Ultra Surround that's actually Ultra, that just may be enabled or foreshadowed by this new Smart Ultra soundbar. Further down the road to maintain flagship relevancy, which is arguably already lost, Bose will need to release a significantly more substantial bar and or move in a A9 modular direction. Until then, this system is something like the MVP of the minor leagues 
with a major league price. Since you're still there, which I really appreciate, please consider helping me with my revised up 22,000 subs by 2024 goal. So the internet likes me just a little bit more. And uh, comment about my sparkling personality. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.